Callisto's surface was a tapestry of shadows and ice, a silent sentinel on the fringe of the Jovian system. The moon, with its pockmarked face, bore witness to the universe's indifference to a single life, especially one as seemingly inconsequential as the wounded figure sprawled in the crevasse of a dormant volcano. Her name was Serafina, her body a canvas of gossamer-thin limbs and bioluminescent veins that traced her form like a celestial roadmap. The scout from Nyxteria was on a mission of peace, her objective to find common ground in a galaxy where first contact was often met with hostility. The Nyxterians were beings of light and sound, their society a symphony of intellect and empathy, so attuned to the universe that violence was anathema to them. Serafina, like her kin, was a creature not of war but of exploration, her vessel unarmed, reliant on stealth and speed. Her mission to Jupiter's moons had been one of observation, to study the gas giant's satellites for signs of life or resources that could be shared. It was a mission endorsed by the Galactic Concord, but one not without risks. An unforeseen asteroid storm had ambushed her, and her craft, ill-equipped for such assault, succumbed to the relentless barrage. The impact was catastrophic, throwing her ship off course and onto Callisto's unforgiving terrain. Serafina had managed to send a distress signal before her systems failed. But as hours turned to days, hope dwindled. Nyxteria was light years away, and her people, cautious of faster-than-light travel's disruptive ripples through space-time, would take time to reach her, if they received her message at all. Her only companions were the stark silence of Callisto and the ever-watchful eye of Jupiter, looming large in the sky. Her suit, designed to nourish and heal, had been compromised in the crash. The life-sustaining fluids leaked slowly into the vacuum, forming iridescent pools around her. As she lay there, her consciousness flickering like a dimming star, she accepted her fate. To die here, cold and alone, was a fate she had never imagined, for her people celebrated each passing with songs and light. On Callisto, her death would be just another secret, another shadow among many. But the universe, it seemed, was not quite done with Serafina. Far above, a beacon had been caught by human sensors, a flash of light amidst the darkness, an anomaly worth investigating. It was the dying echo of her distress signal, a whisper that would bring Eli Mason, a miner and an unwitting savior, into her story. Eli, aboard his mining ship, the Prospector, was a man more acquainted with rocks and ice than with alien life. His job was simple, find valuable minerals and bring them back to Earth. However, curiosity was a trait as inherent in him as the instinct to breathe, and that curiosity would soon lead him to Serafina, changing both their destinies forever. The silence of Callisto was about to be broken, and the forsaken moon would become the backdrop for a tale of unlikely survival and cross-species friendship. Eli Mason's world was one of routine. Chart the asteroids, mine the minerals, and avoid the pirates that sometimes haunted these trade routes. He was a man whose features were etched by space's unforgiving nature, his hands calloused from labor, his eyes sharp from years of scanning the horizons of dead worlds for signs of life. His ship, the Prospector, was a patchwork of old hull plates and newer tech, an heirloom of humanity's first ventures into deep space refitted with the latest mining gadgets. It was a reliable vessel, one that had served him well, but what it lacked in aesthetics, it made up for in character. On a standard sweep over Callisto, Eli's attention was drawn to an anomalous signal, a spike in the electromagnetic readings that his instruments couldn't immediately classify. Must be a glitch, he muttered to himself, his hand already moving to recalibrate the sensors. But the signal persisted, a stubborn blip that tugged at his curiosity. Against his better judgment, Eli diverted course, veering away from the mapped mining sites towards the unknown. This better not be a wild comet chase, he grumbled, half to himself, half to the ship that hummed reassuringly around him. As he descended toward the source of the signal, his scanners clarified the image, a downed ship, unlike any he had encountered. It was sleek, almost organic in design, its hull reflecting the dim light of distant stars. Eli's pulse quickened. He had stumbled upon something extraordinary. He maneuvered the prospector closer, 
using its powerful floodlights to cast a cone of illumination over the scene. There, amidst the wreckage, was Serafina. Even unconscious, her form was ethereal, her skin emitting a faint glow that pulsed weakly with her dwindling life force. Eli had heard stories of aliens, every spacer had. Tales shared in hushed tones over stale drinks in orbiting dive bars. But here was proof. Here was contact. His heart raced at the implications, at the sheer wonder of it all. With cautious haste, he donned his suit and activated the ship's airlock. The outer door closed behind him with a hiss, and he stepped out onto Callisto's desolate surface. The gravity was weak, and each step was a careful bounce towards the alien. Reaching Serafina, Eli hesitated. This was a being from the stars, fragile and hurt. He knelt, his suit systems scanning her injuries. Eli was no medic, but he knew he couldn't leave her here to die. With gentle hands, he lifted her, her body light in the low gravity, and returned to the prospector. Once inside the infirmary, a small room cluttered with basic medical supplies, Eli placed Serafina on the bed. His hands moved over the consoles, and the ship's rudimentary medical AI sprang to life. Unknown biology, please provide guidance, it intoned in a calm, synthetic voice. I don't know more than you do, Eli replied, frustration edging his voice, but he couldn't give up. He started with the basics. He stemmed the flow of her luminous blood and stabilized her breathing with an oxygen. In the dim light of the prospector's infirmary, Serafina's eyes fluttered like the wings of a lunar moth trying to make sense of her surroundings. The human figure looming over her was both her captor and her savior, a duality she was still too weak to challenge. She studied Eli's face, finding in his worn features a map of concern and weariness. Eli watched her regain awareness, unsure of what to expect. Would she panic, lash out in fear? But there was only a quiet understanding in her gaze, an unspoken gratitude that transcended the barriers of language and species. As the hours turned into days, Serafina's strength returned incrementally, and with it her ability to communicate. Her voice was a melodic harmony the sounds of a living chime that resonated with emotion. Eli, lacking any translator, relied on the universal language of gestures and expression to bridge the communication gap. He learned that when her bioluminescent veins glowed steadily, she was content, and when they flickered rapidly, she was agitated or in pain. He would often find her watching him as he went about his tasks, her gaze following his movements with a quiet curiosity. Eli had reprogrammed the prospector's food synthesizer to produce simple sugars and amino acids, guessing at her dietary needs. Watching her consume the food he offered, he felt an inexplicable sense of fulfillment. Here was proof of life beyond the stars, sharing a meal with him in the quiet of his ship. In those confined quarters, their worlds grew closer. Eli showed Serafina images of Earth, its blue oceans, green forests, and sprawling cities. Her eyes widened at the sight, and she in turn shared glimpses of Nyxteria through an interface device she had on her person. It projected holographic imagery of luminescent gardens and cities that sang with light. Eli, who had spent his life among asteroids and barren worlds, was awestruck by the beauty of her home. One day Serafina hummed a series of melodic notes, a clear pattern emerging, and touched Eli's hand. The prospector's systems, designed to detect and analyze acoustic patterns, attempted to translate. The words were rough and uncertain, but it was a start. Thank you, friend, Eli. Eli's heart swelled. Friend, he repeated, his voice rough with emotion. You're welcome, Serafina. Their bond was a fragile thing, made of light and sound, of shared meals and silent understandings. They were two vastly different beings, brought together by chance and calamity but united in their shared experience of survival. Eli had always believed space to be vast and empty, but now he found it full of potential. It was no longer a void. It was a conduit for connection. Their journey to Earth was weeks away, and Eli knew challenges awaited them. Humanity was not known for its universal acceptance. But he also knew that this bond, this delicate bridge they had built, was worth protecting. As the stars scrolled past the viewports of the prospector, Eli realized that the universe was smaller than he had thought.
The prospector hummed softly as it navigated the quiet sea of stars, its course set for Earth. Inside, Eli and Serafina sat side by side, the silence between them comfortable, filled with mutual curiosity and a growing sense of camaraderie. With the makeshift translation system partially deciphering Serafina's melodious language, Eli learned more about her and Nixteria each day. He discovered that her people were not born but blossomed from the luminescent flora of their homeworld, their consciousness maturing like fruit on a vine. Each Nixterian was a song made flesh, their lives a movement in the grand symphony of their culture. Serafina, in turn, was fascinated by Eli's tales of Earth. She listened intently as he described the roaring oceans, the whispering sands of deserts, and the chorus of life that filled the rainforests. Eli shared stories of humanity's art and music, their struggles and triumphs, the cacophony and harmony that shaped their existence. As she absorbed Eli's stories, Serafina's projection device painted holographic vistas around them, turning the cold metal walls of the ship into windows to Nixteria. Eli watched in wonder as cities of light and sound took shape, their architecture an interplay of organic curves and harmonious frequencies. The Nixterian metropolises were alive, their structures grown, not built, from the radiant flora that covered the planet. The floating gardens of Nixteria were a sight to behold, an ever-shifting mosaic of colors and textures. The plants themselves were sentient to an extent, responding to the emotional state of the Nixterians, blooming in joy, wilting in sorrow, and shimmering with shared laughter. Serafina explained that her people did not dominate their environment, but lived as part of it, their society a delicate balance of giving and receiving. Eli was particularly moved by the aurora spires, towering crystalline structures that pulsed with the natural energies of the planet, their tips caressing the atmosphere and painting the skies with colors that spoke of peace and contentment. It's like a dream, he murmured, reaching out to touch the illusionary light. One evening, as the ship drifted through the belt of an uncharted system, Eli decided to share one of Earth's treasures with Serafina a collection of music from various cultures and times. He watched her face light up, her skin rippling with colors, as she experienced the likes of Beethoven, Miles Davis, and Ainaudi. The music of humanity was diverse and emotionally charged, filled with a passion that seemed to resonate deeply with her. Serafina responded by sharing the Song of Harmony, a Nixterian melody that represented the core of their philosophy. The sound filled the ship a complex weave of tones that was both soothing and invigorating. Eli felt a profound peace settle over him, a sense of being connected to something greater than himself. In the sharing of their worlds, the distance between Earth and Nixteria shrank. They were ambassadors of their people, and through their stories and songs, they sowed the seeds. Eli's apprehensions about returning to Earth were eclipsed by an immediate and pressing danger. The prospector was an aged ship, with scars and stories etched into its hull. But it was not equipped for the turbulent swath of cosmic activity they encountered as they neared the solar system. A violent cosmic storm, the child of colliding energies in space, churned before them. It was a vast maelstrom of charged particles and erratic meteoroids, a tempest that threatened to swallow their tiny vessel whole. Strap in! Eli commanded over the ship's intercom, his voice a mixture of resolve and concern. This is going to get rough. Serafina secured herself beside Eli, her bioluminescent blood pulsing in a rhythm that mirrored her anxiety. The ship began to shudder as they entered the storm's fringe, buffeted by waves of gravitational distortion. Eli's hands flew over the controls, piloting with a precision born from a lifetime in space. He dodged larger meteoroids and rode the gravitational currents, all while keeping a wary eye on the ship's integrity monitors. Serafina, for her part, was not a passive passenger. Her understanding of cosmic flows and energies, while not directly translatable to human technology, provided Eli with insights that proved invaluable. She hummed tones that somehow eased the ship's passage, her voice blending with the cacophony of the storm calming the chaos that surrounded them. Together they wove a path through destruction, a duet of human intuition and alien harmony. The ship creaked and groaned, 
protesting as it was pelted by debris, but it held together under Eli's deft control and Serafina's ethereal guidance. As they cleared the final curtain of the storm, the prospector emerged battered but whole. Behind them, the storm raged on, a spectacle of natural fury that left them both with a renewed appreciation for the frailty of their existence. Eli let out a long breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding, and slumped back in his seat, the tension ebbing from his shoulders. That was too close, he said, his voice a raspy whisper. Serafina reached out, placing a hand on his arm. Her touch was cool, soothing, and her luminescence flared gently, a visual sigh of relief. The ship was quiet, save for the faint hum of the engines and the distant echoes of the storm. They had survived by relying on each other, two beings from different worlds, their fates entwined by the crossed stars that had brought them together. The experience solidified their bond, each now an integral part of the other's story. Yet as they neared Earth, Eli's earlier fears crept back. The storm was a mere prelude to the challenges ahead. Earth was still reeling from the geopolitical tensions that space exploration and resource scarcity had exacerbated. Would humanity see the opportunity for connection, as he did? Or would they react with fear and aggression? For Serafina, Earth represented a beacon of diversity and life, much like her own Nyxteria, but she was astute enough to sense Eli. As the prospector approached Earth, the familiar blue marble loomed large against the inky blackness of space, continents and clouds illuminated by the sun's benevolent glow. For Eli, the sight of his home planet stirred a cocktail of emotions, nostalgia, love, and an undercurrent of trepidation about the future that awaited Serafina in the cradle of humanity. Eli had spent the remaining journey preparing for their arrival. The mining vessel was not equipped for the diplomatic delicacies required for first contact, and Earth's United Global Coalition, UGC, was notoriously cautious and bureaucratic in its dealings with extraterrestrial encounters. Each strategy that formed in his mind seemed fraught with risk, the potential for misunderstanding and mistrust lurking in the shadows of each plan. Serafina sensed his inner turmoil, her luminescent skin reflecting her concern in a dance of subtle hues. Eli, your thoughts are troubled, she noted, her voice echoing softly in the confines of the cockpit. Eli met her gaze, his brow furrowed. Earth isn't like Nyxteria, he confessed. We're divided in more ways than I'd like to admit. Your arrival, it could spark wonder, or it could ignite fear. And fear makes people do irrational things. Serafina processed his words, the colors of her skin dimming to a soft, contemplative glow. On Nyxteria we have a saying, she began, her translator weaving her melodic tones into words. From the soil of caution blooms the flower of harmony. We must tread carefully but not lose hope for unity. Eli nodded, bolstered by her optimism. We'll need a plan, he determined. I have contacts within the UGC, people who might help us navigate the red tape and get you the protection you need. As they entered Earth's orbit, Eli sent a coded message to his most trusted contact, Captain Lena Horowitz. She was a veteran of the space lanes, now serving in a diplomatic capacity with the UGC. If anyone could understand the importance of his discovery and the need for discretion, it would be Lena. While waiting for a response, Eli brought the prospector into a geostationary orbit above the dark side of the planet, cloaking their presence from the prying eyes of Earth's defense systems. He wanted to control their introduction to Earth on his own terms, fearing that an unexpected alien appearance might provoke a less-than-diplomatic response. Hours passed the tension mounting, until a transmission crackled through the static. Eli, this is Lena. Your message was cryptic. Meet me at the old UGC rendezvous point. We'll talk there. Eli sighed, a mix of relief and fresh anxiety washing over him. Lena's involvement was a beacon of hope, but it didn't guarantee safe passage through the quagmire of Earth's bureaucracy and xenophobia. Serafina, we're going to meet an old friend of mine. Eli said as he prepped the prospector for descent. She might just be our best shot at keeping you safe here. With a gentle thrum, the ship began its cautious descent towards the rendezvous point. A the prospector touched down discreetly in a hidden valley, 
shielded by the towering cliffs and dense foliage of the UGC's classified rendezvous point. Eli powered down the engines, their thrumming heartbeat giving way to an expectant silence. He turned to Serafina, offering a small, confident nod. This is it. Time to meet Lena. The hatch opened with a hiss, and the crisp air of Earth rushed in to greet them, a stark contrast to the recycled atmosphere they had grown accustomed to in space. Serafina took a tentative step onto the soil of Earth, her senses flooded by the planet's vibrant life force. The sunlight danced upon her skin, igniting a radiant display of colors that reflected her wonder and awe. Eli led her to a secluded meeting spot, where Captain Lena Horowitz was already waiting, a stern figure whose uniform bore the marks of service and the badges of diplomacy. Her gaze fell upon Serafina, widening in a mixture of astonishment and recognition of the moment's gravity. Lena, this is Serafina. She's peaceful, and she needs our help. Eli introduced them with a gravity that underscored the situation's delicacy. Lena stepped forward, her demeanor softening. Welcome to Earth, Serafina, she said, extending a hand in a gesture of friendship. Serafina hesitated, then mimicked the motion, placing her hand in Lena's. Their meeting was cut short by an urgent communique from Lena's communicator. Her expression darkened as she listened to the message. Eli, the UGC has caught wind of an unidentified vessel entering the atmosphere. They're scrambling recon drones as we speak. We don't have much time. The weight of those words hung heavy in the air. Eli's worst fears threatened to materialize. The UGC wouldn't hesitate to take Serafina into custody for study, or worse, detainment. We need to move now, Lena urged. I can buy you some time, delay the reports, but you need to get Serafina off planet. Eli's mind raced. His ship wasn't fast enough for a getaway, and any attempt to flee would only draw more attention. But Lena had connections, access to the UGC's resources. Lena, we need a ship, one that can get Serafina back to Nixteria. Lena nodded, her decision made in the space of a heartbeat. I know just the one, follow me. They moved quickly, Lena leading them through the dense underbrush to a hidden UGC hangar, camouflaged against the valley's natural landscape. Inside rested a sleek, unmarked ship, state-of-the-art, and designed for diplomatic missions beyond the solar system. Eli looked at the vessel, then back at Lena. You're sure about this? Lena's face was resolute. Eli, you've always been a damned good spacer, but today, you're the best hope for a peaceful future between our worlds. Get her home. With Lena's credentials, they bypassed the security protocols and boarded the vessel. The hangar doors opened to the skies, and Eli piloted the ship out of Earth's embrace with Serafina by his side. As they ascended, Serafina's translator hummed a new melody, one filled with bittersweet notes. Eli? You are leaving your home for me. Why? Eli spared a glance at the receding planet, 